We begin this afternoon with the latest information coming out of Syria. President Bashar al-Assad now says that the Israeli airstrikes on Syria over the weekend amount to a declaration of war. He also warns that options are on the table for retaliation. This opens up the possibility for violence raging in Syria to actually cross the borders and transition into a regional conflict. Yesterday, the White House commented on the Israeli airstrikes on Syria, saying weapons transfers to Hezbollah are of concern. They went on to say that Israel has a right to respond in, quote, their own sovereign interests. Meanwhile, Senate Foreign Relations Committee Chairman Robert Menendez has introduced legislation that would arm Syrian opposition groups, but the bill goes further than that. It would also provide military training as well as non-lethal aid to rebel groups that have been vetted. And Senator Menendez is not alone in his demands for action. Senator John McCain and numerous Republicans are calling for an American response as well. This proposed legislation to back the rebels comes at an interesting time during this conflict, and that is because a leading member of the United Nations Independent Commission on Inquiry on Syria actually told Swiss TV on Monday that there's evidence suggesting that rebel forces are, and not President Assad's army might have been the ones using chemical weapons. The U.N. itself distanced itself from those remarks, saying that they have not yet reached conclusive evidence on the use of chemical weapons in Syria. So obviously there is a lot of information unfolding about the country right now. To help me break it all down, RT correspondent Anastasia Cherkina. Hi there, Anastasia. Let's start off with the most recent developments. Uh, Secretary of State John Kerry is visiting um, with Sergei Lavrov, his uh, Russian counterpart, in Moscow today. What came of these talks? Well, uh, Megan, uh, certainly uh, what came out of this talks was quite unexpected in a sense because uh, while the war drums are beating here in the United States with uh, certain lawmakers proposing bills that would uh, indicate uh, following steps of uh, U.S. heavy involvement in Syria, we did hear a more lighter talk uh, come out of these negotiations in Moscow earlier today. Uh, basically, what we heard was that uh, uh, John Kerry has said that the U.S. and Russia have similar positions on the Syrian crisis and uh, that uh, they both believe, the two countries, that uh, the, to solve the Syrian crisis, everybody needs to stick to the Geneva Communique roadmap for creating a transitional government in Syria, which was outlined uh, in June last year. And both Russia and the United States, according uh, to Kerry and Lavrov, believe that this is still the most uh, tangible way of trying to come up with uh, to a solution in Syria. And they both basically are saying that uh, the opposition and the Syrian government need to create a transitional government that would manage affairs on the ground. And this, hopefully, according to them, only negotiations would put a solution to uh, the events unraveling there. Now, obviously, uh, both the U.S. and Russia have to uh, look at this situation, being uh, two of the most powerful countries that have influence uh, over in Syria, um, and really consider what uh, they could do in, in terms of an international response to this uh, crisis. Was there any indication of, other than negotiations, of what could possibly happen, be happening? And was there any indication of Secretary Kerry um, getting Russia on the same page as, at the, as the U.S. at this point? No, uh, Megan, certainly at this point, negotiations are all we have outlined, at least at this meeting in Moscow. That's all they've uh, kind of uh, come out to say that they do believe that negotiations are the only way to dealing with this crisis. Certainly, the U.S. and Russia do remain split on whether or not there should uh, uh, re regime change should occur on the ground. Of course, the United States believes that to be the case. Russia doesn't. But uh, from what we heard today, they still believe that this roadmap, the existing one of a transition government, is uh, the key to achieving su success on the ground. Now, obviously, Secretary Kerry is in Moscow right now uh, talking about all these different aspects uh, of the crisis in Syria. Back here at home, as I had mentioned, Senator Robert Menendez actually uh, made this proposal legislation to possibly um, arm rebel troops on the ground that have been vetted. Can you talk about the timing of this proposed bill with the Israeli airstrikes this past weekend and also that U.N. inquiry that we've been talking about saying that those chemical weapons might have been used by um, Syrian rebels and not the Syrian government? 
Megan, the timing is very curious in the sense that uh, there are so many different positions existing on the, on, on the situation right now. We have Lavrov and Kerry talking about negotiations. We have U.S. lawmakers suggesting, you know, uh, getting involved more heavily on the ground. We do know that there's been uh, a ton of finger pointing surrounding whether or not uh, it was the Syrian government that had used uh, chemical weapons in the crisis, whether it was the opposition that had used uh, uh, the chemical weapons. Certainly a lot of finger pointing. Certainly the situation is at a boiling point. And uh, this particular bill, what it does is kind of pushes for further U.S. involvement. Specifically, it suggests that a $250 million fund be created for uh, the transition process to speed up the transition process on the ground, but also calls for U.S. to provide arms and uh, military training and uh, non-lethal aid in Syria to the opposition groups, as well as uh, would basically, if it were to come through and be approved and become a law, that Washington would have the right to impose sanctions on individuals providing oil and arms to the Syrian government. But this is only in its first stages. This has to go through the, uh, the committee itself and then the, the Senate and the House of Representatives to be signed by Obama. So we're going to have to wait and see if that happens, and that would mean uh, a new push, uh, a unilateral push from the U.S. And Anastasia, a lot of the critics of this bill and of the idea of intervention in Syria actually have said that there's, first of all, no way to be able to vet these rebels and, and figure out which ones are um, actually going to send that money, that fund money, to al-Qaeda. We know some of them are actually linked with al-Qaeda, so there's a lot of questions. But let me ask you this. There is also a number of safety nets uh, for the Syrian uh, country for the U.S. not to be involved. There's the U.N., for instance, and the Security Council. There's also the Arab League. So can you talk about these safety nets and also possibly uh, talk about the fact that the U.S. is the one that is saying we might need to step up? Well, it's the U.S. and its uh, kind of Western allies definitely trying to uh, kind of push more action at this point. But uh, it's, uh, you know, we still have to keep in mind that it's very split opinions. It's uh, lawmakers. It's people who are actually dealing with the Syrian crisis directly. And certainly there are safety nets. And the U.N. has been a major one, like in this particular scenario, because of Russia and China blocking U.S. attempts to uh, intervene in Syria more heavily, this has not been the case. And uh, it seems like this is a position that's going to stick around. So uh, while the United Nations nations exist, the United Nations Security Council, the U.S. is not going to be able to just plow through any international collaboration without getting others involved. RT correspondent Anastasia Cherkina reporting from New York.